Continuing our reading in Hellbent for Election by Phyllis Spishak, Chapter 28. The ascent proved far more difficult than the descent had been, for I had grown in size and seemed to grow more with each step I took. The walls of the tunnel pressed in on me until I went from standing to stooping to going along on my hands and knees and finally crawling. I will never make it. I shouted, hoping Alexis was outside. Hurry, he said, though it was not much consolation that the voice was his, for it seemed filled with concern. The only way out is the way in which you went in, through your own effort. I began clawing wildly then, inch by inch, until my hands, for I seemed to have had them since I emerged in the pit below, were nearly at the edge of the opening. A little further, he said, one more good stretch. I tried, but could not make it. My shoulders seemed to balloon until I thought I should strangle and die, lodged this close to escape. What is your first name? Alexis asked impatiently. Say it. I willfully, I gasped. Willfully. Do you want to come out or do you not? He barked. Will fully. I grunted again, straining with all my might. And then, when my arms felt as if they had left my shoulders, my sockets, my fingertips curled around the edges of the outside opening. I pulled until each, every inch of my body felt raw and bleeding from scraping on the sides of the tunnel. The hardest part came between the wrists and the elbows, for my hands were helpless and there was nothing I could hang on to or clutch. I braced my arms, V-shaped, against the outer edge, peeling off the flesh as I ejected my body a foot nearer the opening. Then my elbows were through, and I bent them outward, stripping my upper arms to the bones as my shoulders edged forward. At last, my arms were out of the pits, but my ever-increasing shoulders pressed into my neck on either side until my eyes bulged and I felt as if my head would be forcibly popped off. Pull, Willful, Alexis urged. Pull quickly. I fanned both arms wide against the rocky outside and strained until my blood vessels seemed to burst, one by one in my ears. Then, with, my, with one great last agony of expulsion, my head and shoulders were through the opening. I scurried feverishly to extend the remainder of my being from the mouth of the tunnel, which seemed to be closing like an iron claw. I was at last free and outside. The air was fresh and sweet and bright and cool. I saw Alexa standing there, smiling, gently nodding his head. Alexis, I choked. My beloved friend, my help in time of need. I reached out to embrace him, but suddenly I realized I had no arms at all, no legs, no head. In fact, I was incorporeal. But how? I said, when, where? Alexis laughed. Oh, come, Willful. Ask on the way. We started off, and I, free and airy and spilling over with delight, skipped and twirled. Though once I did pause to look back and, to my amazement, saw no tunnel opening at all. Uh, what became of it? I asked Alexis. It is still there, he said, for those who will not permit him to give them a better place to spend eternity. They have to forget themselves long enough to listen to him, you see. Uh, but, I said, remembering the pitiful tangle of limbs at the foot of the tunnel, uh, they try. They try now, he corrected. Now it is too late. We seemed to be going along at a brisk pace, and Alexis looked neither left nor right. But, but I was permitted to come out, and I said, Only because you believed before you went in, I was granted special permission to let you glimpse what you thought you desired, to show you that, like all the other things you thought you could substitute, it was only bitter disappointment. Also, if you had not really wanted to come out enough to bear physical death once more, you would not have escaped, 
you would have slipped back. Then I really came very close to condemnation. You had to want to come out more than you wanted to stay in. What became of the body I had? I am sure I had one. That was the housing of all animal suffering. Willful, you shred it, shed it with the last of your diabolical desire. I danced around and looked at the ground then. My shadow is gone, I said. Well, quite gone, Willful. But then I thought of something else. Shamefully, I admitted, Alexis, I really thought the way it turned out to be down below was what it would be like up above. Alexis sent a bright smile in my direction. And now, what do you think it will be like up above? I think I think I well, I think it will be it will have none of that sort of thing in it at all. He smiled even brighter, nearly blinding me. Anything else? I think possibly that somehow uh, I don't know how, mind you, it will be the place I've I've always dreamed of. A place transcendingly um transcending personal differences? Willful he said, beaming until I could see nothing whatever except the fiery white glare of him. You are thinking much better thoughts now. I felt quite pleased, not with myself, for I had done nothing, but quite pleased simply because he was pleased, and a pleasure seemed to flow mutually between us like a warm, shining stream of light. Alexis, I said then, am I larger now? Much larger, Willful. Can you not feel it? Yes, I think so. Though I feel so light and free. Alexis? Yes, Willful. I, I know now what you meant about not feeling sad anymore. The creatures in the pit, I mean, well, well, I believe they are there, but the time is past. Exactly, Willful. You cannot quell the surge of joy within yourself, can you? Nor can it be permissible for the self-imprisoned to prohibit such joy. Otherwise, the upper abode would not be the upper abode. It cannot be what it is if it has a taint of hell in it, can it? I see, I said. It, it all seems very clear now. Also, it seems clear why the upper abode should not consist of any of the things I feared and dreaded. How could it, and, as you say, be what it is? Also, you have helped me. So then, others can be helped, too. Alexis turned to me and sparked, sparkled playfully. You are quite ready to take all the rest on trust then? Absolutely, only will I never see you again? These must be, th there must be so many, um, well, and you are, you are so busy. Would it make you sad never to see me again? Of course not, nothing can make me sad, not anymore, but uh, my joy might be increased if I, once in a while... I should not be a bit surprised, he laughed, <laughs> for eternity is immeasurable in earth time and fuses past, present, and future together in the upper abode. In that way, I shall always be with you if I have been a cause for happiness. Oh, you have, Alexis. You've made me very happy. He has made you very happy, he corrected gently. I am only his instrument. However, we shall possibly meet in our own persons on occasion, as well as commingling forever in his person. Your joy will be increased. Of that I am sure. Alexis, are we going where I think we are going? Am I really, after all my wickedness, to have a second chance? It is not a second chance, Wilful. It is the same first chance, and it is really no chance at all. For you made it a certainty when you believed and accepted. You might call your experience a kind of a rededication. But I could not, I could have lost out. Of course you could have lost out, by choice. For if there were no real losses and no real gains, then there would be no real choices, would there? But look, it is ten seconds to three. And with what we left off walking for we had not been walking on earth for several minutes, but in space, and were immediately above. In the near distance, I saw again the golden glow, the gray from which we came, shading into clear 
light blue, the blue into silvery, shimmering white, and beyond the white, gold emitting such light as to give itself a rosy overcast. We are right on time, Alexa said, smiling brightly on me. Eternally joy, willful. Thank you, Alexis. I said, thank you for everything, and God bless you. He was leaving now, but he turned and beamed radiantly. He always has, Willful. He always has. And with one last wave, he walked toward the golden horizon until the glittering whiteness of his raiment turned rose and then gold, and then even the phosphorescence flickering off in the wake of becoming only flecks of golden dust and he disappeared into the everlasting glory. That's the end of chapter 28.